Hey Valley Middle School, welcome to another math video. Today we're going to be working with rounding fractions and I really break this down into three specific targets. But before we get started on all those targets, let's take a quick look at our trivia question for the day. What did legend Babe Ruth put in his baseball cap to keep cool? We'll be back to the uh, kind of a nutty answer to that one when we're done with instruction. All right, officially then, these are the targets I want to look at. I can round fractions to the nearest zero, half, or whole. I can round mixed numbers to the nearest whole number, and I can estimate sums or differences. Uh, make sure that you're watching either all of these or the specific parts of this that I've asked you to, because I've broken it down into three sections. So you might want to double check uh, your homework assignment. Let's do this thing. All right, so KC ate 9 sixteenths of one apple pie and 7 eighths of a second apple pie. Estimate the amount of pie he ate to the nearest half or whole. Well, 9 sixteenths. Well, 8 sixteenths is a half, so this is really close to a half of a pie he ate there. 7 eighths, well, 8 eighths is a whole, so 7 eighths is really close to the whole, so we'll call that one a whole. And then we've got the whole pie he ate plus the half pie, it would be one and a half pies. But what we're going to be working with today is just as simple as that. I've got a couple of ground rules, one for fractions and one for rounding mixed numbers that'll help you. But the main point of my lesson today is you have to stay flexible in your thinking. Uh, does your answer make sense for that specific situation? All right, let's go on and take a peek at our first one. All right, this is going to be rounding fractions. So we round fractions to the nearest zero, half, or whole number. That means, is it closer to zero, is it closer to half, or is it closer to a whole? Let's take a look at this example, four twelves. Here's four twelves, one, two, three, and four. So right here, is this closer to zero? Is it closer to the half line, the half mark, or is it closer to the whole? Pretty simple when we think about it that way. Sometimes I think about it as a teeter-totter. Would it balance right in the middle? Is it close enough to make it balance? Would it lean? Would it lean the other direction? So in this case, it's really pretty close to a half. And so I would call that half. All right? Remember to stay flexible in your thinking, to think about the situation. Most of the time, these rules will apply. So let's take a look at some examples then. Using our little fraction bar up here, zero, half, and a whole, Three-fifths, well, three-fifths, we go down to the three-fifths thing. One, two, here's the three-fifths line. That would be closer to one-half than it is one whole. So we would call that one-half. Here's eight-ninths down here. Look at, it's so close over here to one that we would certainly call eight-ninths one whole when we're estimating. Four-ninths, on the other hand, that's right here, four-ninths, I guess I call that a half. Look how close that is to the halfway mark. All right. Um, one fifth right here. Well, it's certainly closer to zero, so I would probably just estimate that fraction as zero. And I know that seems weird, but again, you have to think about the situation. Sometimes we need to be more exact, but most of the time estimates are just close, a reasonable or close answer. Nine twelfths. This is kind of one of those weird yeah buts. So here I am at 9 twelfths, and it's exactly halfway between 1 half and 1. Again, you have to think about the situation when you're doing that. Um, I'm going to try to avoid questions like that on the test because if I do put it on the test, I certainly can't have both answers down. But think about the situation. Most of the time, I usually just round up to 1. All right. Um, we've got my good friend here, Cajun Man, in to uh, help us give, uh, give us a little bit of advice. Cajun Man, what do you got to say? You can do it! All right, that means he wants you to try these one, two, three, four, five over here by yourself. Go ahead and pause. All right, let's see how he did. Three ninths, where is it? Three ninths down here. Three ninths would be right here. That's a little bit closer to one half than it is to anything else. So three sixths, that would be one half. One sixth is pretty close to zero. And four fifths and seven ninths are both very close to one. All right, let's uh, maybe have you try a couple more here. So round these fractions to the nearest zero, half, or whole so we can estimate 
a sum or a difference. Now we're getting a little bit more complicated in the wording, but we're still doing the same thing. Go ahead and pause and give it a shot. All right, let's see. 29, 30 seconds, that's almost a whole because 32, 30 seconds would be a whole. 1 16th, that's pretty far away from 8 16 which would be a half, so this is definitely a zero. 350 seconds, that's going to be closer to zero. Uh, 8 ninths, that's almost a whole, so we call that a whole. 7 twelfths, well, 8, sorry, 6 twelfths would be a half. So 7 twelfths is really closer to 1 half. And then, well, here's a weird one, 3 sixteenths. Well, 4 sixteenths would be a quarter, right? So really, following my rules, 3 sixteenths is closer to 0, but some people might call that a quarter. And that's where I need you to be flexible. And go, okay, yeah, in this situation, yeah, rounding that to a quarter would be good. Same way with 5 fourths. 12 24ths would be a half, 6 24ths would be a quarter. So my rule says to round it to zero, but in some, some situations you might want to just put that as a quarter too. The main thing is to be flexible. KJ Man, what did you want to add to that? Be flexible, mon ami. You can do it. That's right, you can do it if you're flexible. All right, let's keep rolling here. Um, that rounds out rounding fractions in some practice error. Here we go to rounding mixed numbers. Now here the rule is we want to round it to the nearest whole number. So when I think about 3 and 2 sixteenths, I can just set my 3 aside because I know I've got 3 holes. So now I'm looking at 2 sixteenths. Now if I put that on the scale, would that be closer to 0 or would it be closer to 1? And here we're fully on the teeter-totter. It would never balance in the middle. It would just tip one way or the other. This one here, 2 sixteenths. It's gonna, you know, it's gonna go to the zero. It's, it's, it's just not close to one half, and it's not close to one. So we would just call this zero, and then just call this three if we were estimating with it. On the other hand, if I were to change this number over here to, I didn't mean to do that, twelve sixteenths, and now we're getting a lot closer to one. And so in this situation, we'd round this to one and tack it on here, giving a final answer of 4. Okay? Stay flexible. Be thinking about the situation. All right, so let's do a couple here. 4 and 2 thirds. Well, 2 thirds is going to be over here someplace, so that's going to be closer to 1. Uh, 6 and 3 fifths. Well, 2 and a half fifths would be right here, so 3 fifths is, uh, is on this side, so we would round that to 6. 12 and 2 eighths. Well, 8 eighths is going to be over here. 4 eighths is going to be in the middle, so we're definitely on this side, closer to 0, so that would just be 12. Same with 3 and 1 fifth. 1 fifth will be here someplace, and so it's going to be closer to 0, so we would just call that 3. 41 and 4 six. Well, this would be 3 six. so 4 six is going to be on this side, tipping it to a hole, so it would be 42. All right? Um... You guys pause and try these ones on your own before I let you hear from Cajun Man again. Go ahead. All right, let's see how you did. Four and three-eighths? Yeah, you're right. Four. It's closer to four. Um, three and five-six. That's also closer to four because five-six is so close to a hole, we would just round that up. Twelve and one-half? Here's kind of a yeah, but so what if it's right smack dab in the middle? Well, you can go to... Um, uh, uh, round up, you can round down. Sometimes I even leave it in the middle and maybe convert to decimals and subtract. But for this case, in general, if you had to ask me, what do you do every time? I would say round up. Um, 11 and a quarter, certainly closer to 11. And 8 and 7 ninths, uh, that's closer to 9. All right, uh, KJ Man, any additional thoughts? It is your turn to try, my friend. All right. I guess you're going to have to do a few more for uh, Cajun Man. Why don't you go ahead and round these mixed numbers to the nearest hole. Go ahead and pause it. All right. Let's see how you did. Uh, four fifths, four, five and four fifths, that rounds up to six. Six and 13 thirtieths. Well, 15 thirtieths would be a half. So this is on this side. 
So we would just leave it at 0 or 16. 21 and 9 tenths, that's really close to 22. So 9 tenths, 10 tenths would be 22. Uh, 7 and 2 ninths, that's going to be over on this side. Again, think about the halfway point would be like 4 and a half ninths, right? So it's on this side, I would just leave it at 7 because that would round to 0, the 2 ninths. Uh, 41 and 4 six. Well, 4 six, that's going to be over on this side again, so I would round up to 42. Okay? All right. Um, now you're ready for your target. How's that sound? Well, that's just dandy. Oh, thanks, Chris Farley. All right. Now our official target for tonight, estimating sums and differences, the, the third part of it. So we have to know that a sum means the answer to an addition problem. The difference, then, is an answer to a subtraction problem. An estimate is to come up with a reasonable solution, and we typically do this mentally. So if we're looking at fractions, we have 9 tenths minus 7 tenths. Well, remember, fractions, we round to the nearest 0, half, or whole. So 9 tenths, that rounds up to 1. 7 tenths, that's pretty close to a half, because 5 tenths would be there. So we would just take that one whole minus the half, and we get 1 half. That's what we're going to be doing today on our quiz. Mixed numbers, very similar to what we did. We'll either round up to the nearest whole number um, or round down to the nearest whole number. So we have 12 and 3 sevenths minus 6 and 7 tenths. So I break it down just like this. 12 and 3 sevenths, that's closer to 12. 6 and 7 tenths, that's closer to 7. 12 minus 7, 5. Mixed numbers are pretty simple because you're just going to think, is it closer to that? Which whole number is it closer to? All right. All right. Um, let's try a couple examples here. So we've got three easy steps, and here we're going to be doing fractions. So first of all, with fractions, you round up to the closest 0, half, or whole. So here we have 12 fourteenths plus 1 third. So let's take a look at 12 fourteenths. Well, that's closer to 1. 1 third, that's closer to half. So very simply, we've got the 1 plus the 1 half would give me 1 half. And we have to check. Does our answer make sense? Yeah, it's, it's close. This is about 1. This is about a half. 1 and a half. Sound fair? All right. Is it exact? No, it's not. You can do this, my friend. That's what mon ami means. My friend, it's French. Eh, I was a French major, so I throw that in once in a while. All right, you try this one by yourself. Go ahead and pause. All right, let's see how you did. So we had 10 twelfths, and that really is close to 1. And 9 sixteenths, that's closer to a half. And this is a subtraction problem, so we just take the 1 minus the 1 half, and we'll get 1 half. Does the answer make sense? Yeah. We got about 1 minus about a half. And that's all we, that's all we got to do. All right, let's try uh, mixed numbers. Basically, you follow the same steps that we've been doing, except for we don't go to that half step. We just kind of round to the nearest whole. So round the fractions up or down to the closest half or whole. So we, here we have 3 and 9 sixteenths plus 2 and 1 eighth. So let's just take a look and see what I did. Well, 3 and 9 sixteenths, that becomes 4 because 8 sixteenths would be half, so it tips my scale. It's closer to 4. 2 and 1 eighth, well, that's really close to 2 because 4 eighths would be a half, and then we have to start thinking, but... This is really closer to 2, so we just have 4 plus 2, which is 6. All right. Um, what have I got hidden under here? I need you to be flexible. Let me just delete this one. Be flexible. You can also think about this one here as 3 and a half plus 2, right? And if you came up with 5 and a half, would that be a reasonable? Yes, it would be. And so when you're dealing with halves or things that are close to a half, like 9 sixteenths, Use your judgment and think about the situation, all right? And I know that's being wishy-washy, but when I write the test, I'll make sure that there's one best answer, okay? In case you decide to, you know, be flexible and go to a half on something like this. All right, let's go. Um, go ahead and try this. Pause and try this one. Oh, I'm sorry. I already had the answers down. Uh, let's skip ahead then. All right, so um, what about one-fourth and three-fourths? Well, these are tough ones, but in this case here, I round up to one, or in this case here, 
I rounded to a half. So I rounded them both up in this situation. So 1 minus 1 half equals 1 half. You can also convert to decimals when you're doing that. You think about that. You could go, well, I could do 0.75 minus 0.25. You can think about money, too. All right? All right. I think I've got one for you to try here. Oh, no. Here was a yeah, but what about when the numbers get really, really super big? The bigger the number, the less important the fractions are when estimating. So here, if I would follow my rules, 48 and 7 eighths plus 15 and a quarter, 48 and 7 eighths is almost 49, but honestly, I could call that 50, and that would be fine. 50 and a quarter, I'd certainly call that 50. So I could come up with 49 plus 50, if I use these two numbers, or I could say 50 and 50 and call it 100 too. Again, the key two words here tonight are being flexible and thinking about the situation. But this is a good one to remember that the bigger the, fra the, bigger the numbers, the holes are, the less important the fractions are when estimating. All right. Um, I think we are good for the night. I've given you guys a ton. Here's your ticket to the show. Why don't you go ahead and give this a shot? We got one doing, dealing with fractions. This will be to the zero, closest zero, half or whole you'll be rounding. Here you'll just go to the closest whole numbers. All right. Sweet. Answer to the trivia question. What did legend, baseball legend Babe Ruth put in his hat to keep cool? Cabbage leaves. Whether, you actually, whether it actually helped or not, we don't really know. I'm pretty sure there's no research about that, but one thing's for sure, he was an amazing baseball player. Quite honestly, in my personal opinion, I think he was the greatest ever. Um, the only reason I think he was better than Hank Aaron is because he, he was a pitcher as well. He was an amazing athlete, an amazing pitcher. Um, the true home run king is not Barry Bonds. I think it's uh, Hank Aaron. Barry Bonds used steroids to help him stay healthy and be stronger, and that just is not smart. So, thank you very much for listening. Sorry about the baseball dialogue. Have a good evening.